I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Dr. Roto, get out the insurance cards, get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. So... It's waiver wire Wednesday, and I get that. But I don't know whether your leagues have waivers or they don't have waivers. So let's just talk about that for a quick second. High stakes leagues don't allow waiver wire pickups once the playoffs start. And I agree with that. I do. I think you need to get your teams in line. You get 20 guys on the roster. Make it work. Uh, That makes sense to me. There's a lot of money online here. There's a lot of money on the line. And you can't afford to make a mistake. I get that. Right? And, I, and they can't have collusion. I don't want to drop anybody. So a lot of times the rules are if you drop anybody, they can't be picked up. That makes perfect sense to me. And there are no pickups. Home leagues don't always operate that way. I do like the rule if you've dropped a guy, you can't get him back in the playoffs. I think that makes sense. Um, I'm in a home league where I've been commissioner for a very long time. We have a rule you have one pickup per week during the playoffs. I may expand that to two per week next year because I think one is a little tight. But these are just rules that you have to use because you don't want to give an unfair advantage to people in your leagues. Now, something came up in a couple of my dynasty leagues last week where people were making trades. Here it was week 13 and guys are making trades. Hold the fort. Don't be making any trades in week 13. Don't be affecting the outcome of the league in week 13. I have a problem with that. I have a big problem with that. So make sure the rules in your league are set, that there's a trade deadline, which I know we've discussed previously, and also what the waiver deadline is. Are there pickups? Are there not? Who can get picked up? How many? How does it affect the league? It's critical. It's critical because right now, I'm going to give you a couple of names today. And if you can get these names, you might win your league. Right? How is that fair? You played all week, all year long, but now in week 14, somebody gets a guy and you don't. Something to be th- said about that. Should we allow pickups through week 16? You know, the SiriusXM host league has that. There's like no rules. It's like a free-for-all. And I remember one year I'm playing the Colton and the Wolfman in the final. We are literally dropping guys right and left. Picking up guys so he can't pick up the other guy. I didn't even know if I was going to use him. It didn't matter. I was picking up a guy that I thought he might use. And he was doing the same. It was crazy. We should have had our teams locked. Whoever it is, it is. So I get that there's injuries. I do. And that's why there should be one or two pickups a week. So then something else came up. So I have a lot of leagues on MFL. So I got to share this with you here. So I'm I'm in a league. I'll just show you an example. And, you know, league reports, playoff brackets. The number one seed, the way MFL has it, three plays six and five plays four. I have no problem with that. But the winner of the three-six game gets the first seed. How is that fair? Why should the first seed play the third seed ever? Seriously. Two plays three. Two doesn't play, right? One doesn't play three. Two plays three. One plays four or five. Why can't we reseed? What's up with that? That's just bad. Why should the number one seed ever play the number three? It's wrong. Clearly wrong. They got to fix that. So what should be in your league? I'll tell you what we have in my league. We have something very interesting. We have pick your poison. So the number one and number two seeds get a buy. Okay? The number three and number four, right? The number three seed gets to pick between the fifth and sixth. He can't pick the fourth. He can't pick the other division winner. But... He can choose of the two wild card teams which guy he wants to face. Right? And then the fourth team plays the other guy. 
I like that rule. You've earned it. You've played well. You make the pick. And then, in this next round, the first team picks it. Team one chooses out of the two teams left who he wants. And then the second team gets the other. I like that. I think it makes it a little bit interesting, personally. I've always liked that rule. But why would number three seed play the number one seed? I want no part of that. I want no part of that. That's ridiculous. I don't know who did those rules, but MFL's got to fix it. The three seed is a good team. I don't want to play Mike Dempsey. Mike Dempsey could beat me. I want to play the four or five seed who probably can't beat me. So it gives an unfair advantage to the number two seed. I almost want to be the number two seed. That's just bad. So what I'm getting at today is check your team's rule, your league's rules for trades, for playoff matchups, for pickups. Okay? Go through those. Now, pickups of the week. First of all, quarterback. Let's start with Aaron Rodgers. The elephant in the room. Aaron Rodgers. Should you go get him? The answer is absolutely maybe. No, I'm serious. Absolutely maybe. I don't want my opponent to have Aaron Rodgers, but I don't really want Aaron Rodgers, but I know I don't want my opponent to have Aaron Rodgers. I don't think he's going to be great, but that said, I don't know. So I'm just going to say, I'll take him. I'll stash him. I'll see what happens. I don't like him against Minnesota in week 16. That's for sure. Week 15, it's, it's Carolina. So be it. I love Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't know how many times I can tell you that. Get Jimmy Garoppolo. I, dra- I took him in a lot of leagues in the main event in the online championship, and I ended up dropping him where they're like, well, maybe C.J. Beathard is going to be the guy. And I kept him on some and not on others. I, I should have kept him. Dumb move. Should have kept him. Should have kept him as long as I possibly could. I like Blake Bortles. I know I can't believe I'm saying that. No, I don't like Blake Bortles. But he's got Houston and San Francisco coming up. Got a nice little schedule there. Doesn't get much better. He's got, I think he's got Seattle this week, Houston, San Francisco. Not bad. Could do a few things. Could do some damage there. How about Deshaun Kaiser? He's now got Josh Gordon. He's got Duke Johnson. He's got Isaiah Crowell. He's got Corey Coleman. He's got weapons. He's got David Ajoku. And this guy runs the ball in the red zone. He, I give him credit. He not, I don't know how brilliant he is. I don't know how great a quarterback he is. But he, he's kind of fearless. i got to give him some props for being fearless. All right, a running back. First of all, Joe Mixon cost me a lot of money. Joe Mixon cost me a whole lot of money. Because he got hurt. If Mixon, if Mixon is out, Gio Bernard will be in. And then Gio Bernard will be a really good play this week. So I'm in on Gio Bernard. If I need to win this week, he's my guy. If Mixon is out, we don't know that yet. But here's an example of a guy who can change the face of a league right now if you pick him up. Gio Bernard. How about Peyton Barber? Jaquiz Rogers stinks. Charles Sims stinks. Doug Martin's still not dealing with a concussion. I'm telling you, Peyton Barber, interesting. He might just be the guy. And he's been good in short yardage. So even if Doug Martin comes back, don't you think that Peyton Barber will get some carries? I know I do. Now, personally, if if Doug Martin doesn't come back, best day ever. Love Peyton Barber without Doug Martin. Hate Doug Martin. So I love Bernard. I love Peyton Barber. I like Mike Davis. I like Mike Davis. I don't like him this week. I don't like him this week. Because he's playing... The Jaguars. Tough week. I'm a little worried. A little worried this week, but I like him in general. I like Mike Davis. I think he's got some juice. Aaron Jones. Somebody might have dropped Aaron Jones. If so, go pick him up. He barely touched the ball last week. But you know what? He's a good player. He's a very good player. And I think Mike McCarthy will get him more involved this week. So go take a look at Aaron Jones. At wide receiver. At wide receiver, we, you know about D.D. Westbrook. We've mentioned him before. I like Will Fuller. Now, Bruce Ellington was placed on the IR. 
So I'll give you a couple of ripple effects. One, is Will Fuller going to play? Maybe. If he's not, does Braxton Miller move outside and Andre Ellington move to the slot? Just maybe. But I think that Will Fuller should be back. Been a few weeks, he should be back. Savage has been better than you think he's been. And if Will Fuller's back, Hopkins and Fuller will share. So I'm rooting for Will Fuller. How about Mike Wallace? Revenge. Revenga. Against the Steelers. You know I'm in on it. How about Trent Taylor? Jimmy Garoppolo used to throw to Danny Amendola and Julian Edelman. He knows how to throw to the, the short guys in the slot. Trent Taylor. How about Zay Jones? I know that Nathan Peterman is the quarterback. But Kelvin Benjamin, he's just starting to get back on the field. And Jordan Matthews is on the IR. So I think he's interesting. How about Josh Reynolds? This is the last week you can get Josh Reynolds. This is the last week you can get him. Why? Because you won't want him after that. Because Robert Woods will be back in week 15. So I'll take Josh Reynolds this week against Philadelphia. All right, tight ends. How about Steven Anderson? Ryan Griffin, IR. CJ Fedorowicz, IR. Steven Anderson, the dude. Now let me tell you this. He's a great athlete. And Jason Braddock, my guy with the Texans, has always liked Steven Anderson. This is his opportunity. There's no excuses now. Plus, he's getting the 49ers. I think he's a good start this week. Ricky Seals-Jones. What is it? What is there not to like about this guy? He's huge. He's huge. And I think he's going to be a, a good tight end there. Larry Fitzgerald's the number one option. Ricky Seals-Jones is number two. How about Dwayne Allen? No Gronk means Dwayne Allen in, right? No Gronk means Dwayne Allen in. And Gronk's suspension was upheld. Out for week 14. We know it. Juju, out for week 14. Georgia Loca has been rescinded. I guess his wasn't as dirty. The other ones were just dirty. Aloka's wasn't good, by the way. I wouldn't say, oh, good job there, George. I would say I'm not sure it was dirty. All right, so let's see what's happening here. Dante Moncrief, questionable. Dak Prescott, feeling better. Matthew Stafford, doing a little better. Adrian Peterson, still not practicing yet. Kelvin Benjamin, returned to practice. Doug Martin, as I told you, in concussion protocol. You've got to pay attention to these things. You've got to pay attention to these things. We will keep on talking about that. To get you to a fantasy championship. So we had 42 world championship leagues. 25 of those leagues were dominators. You know how good that is, by the way? So basically, you get $10,000 if you win your league of 12 teams. Right? If you have the most points and the best record. It's pretty good. That's pretty darn good. So congratulations to those people. Kimra had three dominators. Three. Mark Mitchell had two. Mike Santos and Kirk Cukes had two. That's awesome stuff. It is not easy to dominate. We just missed out on dominating. We just missed out on it. Not easy. But that, I, I got to tell you, I think it's such a great thing that you can come in with 10000 bucks if you have the most points and the best record in your league. Boom! You're the best team. You deserve the money. Boom! I love it. Right? Now, we always look at over the offseason, you know, if teams are tied with records, should they get involved? We could discuss that. But I think what makes the World Championship so fantastic is that you know if you're the best team, With the best record and the most points, you're getting 10K. That's pretty awesome. Okay? Now, there's also money for winning your league, best record, most points. There's there's money to be had in your league. Love that. But really, I hope you guys have had a sensational time this year with our leagues. And if so, please recommend them to other people so that you can come back next year and our leagues can be bigger and better than ever. Right? More people 
more opportunities, more money in the pot, more, more prizes, more fun. That's all you can ask for, right? You know what else I could ask for? I can ask for a subscription to ScoutDFS.com. Hey, Santa, hook me up. ScoutDFS.com for the best DFS information anywhere. NBA, NHL, NFL, whatever you need, it's there for you. Also, ScoutFantasy.com. Ronis and I and Sean Childs still answering your questions, still doing our thing, helping the Scout Army win championships. That's what we do. All right, guys. Time now to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. If you have waiver wire questions, leave them on the Scout Premium message boards. We will get back to you with those answers. I gave you the guys I like this week. Those are the guys I'm in on. I hope you make the right bids. I hope you get the guys you need. We'll discuss more tomorrow, more news, more notes, Thursday preview. Whatever you need to win, I'll be here for you. Wishing you a great day. Be well. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit ScoutFantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts!